Hey everybody, Jay Widener here. Uh, I'm finally back. I had a kind of a, a strange illness, so I'm back reading the book. Where was I here? Yes, I don't like to talk about my uh, my own personal life too much, but I did have a brief bout with a scary thing, so I'm glad to be back. thing here. Almost here, hang on. Okay, so today, I am from the end of time with the late great Vincent Bridges. Today, we're going to be chapter eight, section three, <clears throat> messages from many sources. I don't have real good light here, so I'll have to do my best. As we worked on this book, certain portions of the mystery kept emerging spontaneous from other researchers. The importance of the center of the galaxy, our alignment to it, is one of the best examples. We know of its significance throughout our connection with Moira Tim's work on the Jed Pillar, Hamlet's Mill by Santillana and Deschen, and Terence and Dennis McKenna's The Invisible Landscape. But in the summer of 1996, several people published articles or presented pages on the great cross of the equinoxes and galactic center in the years from 1998 to 2002. While none of these perspectives fit our Hende research framework, I'm sorry, or explained its importance, the idea was spreading. Around this time, John Major Jenkins, the late John Major Jenkins, one of the foremost scholars of the Mayan calendar system, began to suggest in various articles that the end date of the Maya calendar, the winter solstice of 2012, was chosen because of its precise alignment of galactic center and rising sun. The Mayan astronomers, as Je Jenkins had demonstrated, have much to tell us about our ancient philosopher's stone cosmology. While Jenkins' work supports our thematic interpretation of the ancient astronomical vision, he had no better suggestion than Reich about the catastrophe itself. In the message of the Maya end date, the first chapter in Jenkins' Maya Cosmogenesis 2012, he asked the question, what does the 2012 alignment mean for human beings on Earth? He tries to answer that by pointing to another factor involved in the rare processional conjunction. The galaxy equator is the center of the Milky Way itself, and by 2012, the solar meridian will have crossed once over this galactic equator. Jenkins, po Jenkins postulates that as the Earth, earthly equator delineates distinct field effect properties common to all spinning bodies, water in a drain, the flow of tornadoes and hurricanes all flow the opposite in each hemisphere. So does the galaxy. That would make the period from 1998 when the solstice meridian hit the exact center of the galaxy and 2012, its helical rising, a sort of field effect null zone, much like the calm eye of a burnt hurricane, Jenkins tells us, which balances the surrounding chaos. Jenkins calls the shift a field effect energy reversal. He doesn't predict any catastrophes for this energy reversal, but instead focuses on the psychological aspect. Jenkins sees the 2012 field reversal as a moment in which the human spirit can emerge from unconscious patterns and blossom, unquote. He, he mentions the idea of a literal pole shift so beloved by New Age doomsayers, but weighs in on leaning towards a pole shift in our collective psyche. He ends the chapter 
with a reference to ancient cultures such, such as the Magdalenian in Eastern Europe 19,000 years ago, but refuses to speculate on what happens to end the Golden Age. Ultimately, we are convinced by his work that the Maya believed at this point marked a change significant enough to be called the zero point of time. But we are left wondering about the mechanism involved. If the Maya were simply extrapolating much onto a celestial background, then it is possible that the astronomical indications alone were enough to define an endpoint. However, this ignores the subtlety and sophistication of the cosmology itself. It is not just describing the flow of events in the sky, it is trying to interpret those events down here on Earth. As Jenkins points out, the 260-day short count based on the human gestation period is also a factor of the processional 26,000-year cycle, as above, so below, even in human evolution. But as always, the question is the mechanism. Another work, The Mayan Prophecies by Gilbert and Cotterell, appeared to define the true meaning of the Mayan end date, but because of so many errors and basic misunderstandings, failed to completely be convincing. For one thing, its co-authors seem to have very different ideas about the astronomical meaning of the Mayan calendar itself. Cotterell believes that the 2012 date marked a magnetic field reversal caused by increased sunspot activity. Why this should be the case and how it is related to the Mayan long count is very unclear. Cotterell, focus, Cotterell focuses on a close analog of the Mayan super number of 1,366,560 divisible by the Venus cycle, the Mars cycle, the Mercury cycle, the 365 day year, the 18,980-day calendrical round, and 37,960-day great Venus round, which which by his rather unique theory of solar activity marks one magnetic reversal cycle. The problem, however, is that the date he gives as being close to the super number of days since the beginning of the long count, 627 CE, has no connection to the end date of 2012. If 627 CE marked one magnetic shift, then by Cotterell's own theory, the next wouldn't be in 2012, but more than 3,000 years later in the 35th century. He, his already shaky theory falls apart on that unexplained discrepancy. Gilbert does little better with his birth of Venus theory, which suggests that the significance of 2012 lies in its winter solstice opposition of Venus and the Pleiades with the Sun and Orion. While accurate, these observations fall short of the drama needed to mark the shift from one cosmic age to another. Gilbert's interpretation of the Venus cycle is off by a few years, according to Jenkins, and this throws even more doubt on his solution. Cotterell's intuition about solar activity does seem somewhat based in reality. The year 2012 marks a 22-year high in sunspot activity, but Cotterell cannot tell us how this fits in the long count. We are left with an end date, a marker, of life and death rebirth as the INRI of Hende reminds us, but no good ex explanation for why it should be such. By the time Jenkins' magnum opus, Myocosmogenesis 2012, appeared in the summer of 1998, our research was approaching critical mass. His conclusions, coupled with Terence McKenna's time wave zero research, based on the trigrams of the I Ching, and which, do, and which also pointed to an end date of 2012, suggests that our interpretation of the Lalamont Credence was closer to the truth than we had imagined. There seemed to be some con connection at the level of cosmology between all of these idea streams. The astroalchemical meme began to look more and more like a survivor from some prehistoric global civilization. 
And if that were the case, then we were looking, we were looking for a catastrophe, one so large that there must be some evidence left. Graham Hancock, in his groundbreaking book, Fingerprints of the Gods, presented a catalog of cataclysmic events and concluded that some sort of upheaval and flood occurred around 13,000 years ago. While he doesn't speculate on the cause of the cataclysm, he does now, which in his view resulted in a massive shift of the Earth's crust, he doesn't believe that either now, he does suggest that it is somehow related to the processional cycle and its cosmic clock. However, Hancock's perspective on this cosmic clockwork is lacking a few key elements. He focuses on precession as the movement of the celestial pole while ignoring the ecliptic pole. He emphasizes the celestial mill and its grinding without ever identifying the point around which it circles. Having missed the importance of the ecliptic pole in defining an unmoving axis, he is also unclear about the significance of the ecliptic crossing points on the Milky Way. Thus, Hancock misses the importance of the galactic alignments. He does, however, confirm our notion that the catastrophe, whatever its cause, destroyed an advanced global civilization. He even speculates on secret societies. Quote, if the circumstances were right, it seems possible that the essence of the cult the secret of the catastrophe's timing might survive and be carried forward by a nucleus of determined men and women, unquote. Their objective would have been to preserve the knowledge for a future civilization facing the same event. We have seen how the Bahiric Philosopher's Stone and the cross at Hende function in as such, just such devices for, for preserving the secret. Somehow, though, a few pieces were missing. What caused the catastrophe? And, and could that catastrophe be related to the more transmutational process of alchemy? We had found that historically they were interconnected, but just how it worked was still elusive. The secret of alchemy and the secret of the double catastrophe we would learn from Dr. Paul Laviolette are based on the same physics of creation. All right, so that's the end of that chapter. So, um, yeah, so the Mayan short count is 260 days, which is the gestation period of, of a pregnancy. And that, of course, is a harmonic of the larger uh, 26,000 year procession of the equinox. And um, also it's a, a um, it's, it, it's a, a, a a variant of the of the number twenty six, which is the uh, Kabbalah number for God or for whole, and I'll explain that at some point uh, in the future. So anyway, all these people are all pointing towards the same direction, and of course, the end date did not happen in twenty twelve, at least not physically. Uh, it's still to come, uh, but I do believe that we were changed uh, in twenty twelve. I really do. I believe that we are be have started becoming a different. Uh, species almost at that stage. Uh, so um, anyway, that's it. I'm Jay Widener. Thanks for watching. Sorry it took me so long. I will be back to finish all this. I'm feeling a lot better now. And I thank you for your patience. Uh, hit like and subscribe, tell your friends, and I will go. Thank you very much.